Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. Today's presentation is by Dr. Major Vimal Raj, who is the Head of Radiology and a Consultant Cardiothoracic Radiologist in Narayana Institute of Cardiac Sciences, Bangalore. He is an expert in adult and congenital cardiac CT and MR imaging and also has special interest in interstitial lung disease, and pulmonary hypertension imaging. He has published more than 75 articles in peer-reviewed journals and has textbooks on FRCR and HRCT under his belt. He also holds a patent in post-mortem CT coronary angiography catheter design and has been awarded a medal by the NATO for his operational service in Afghanistan. He is a convener of Cardiothoracic Imaging Fellowship in NH Bangalore. Welcome to this session on Cardiac MR Structured Reporting. One of the best references to look for structured report formalization is this uh, guideline paper which came out of the Society of Cardiac MR, the SEMR, in their journal in year 2009 which gives you a very detailed look at how one should be reporting cardiac MR examinations. It is very difficult to put together a standard reporting template which will encompass all the different abnormalities and case varieties that one may come across, but there are some basic clinical principles that one has to follow. These are my individual opinions and I have been following them for the last 15 years they do differ from some of the society guidelines and some of the general practices because the principles and the patterns of reporting that i have developed have been in collaboration with the clinicians and cardiologists who are the end user of these reports so before you get into any uh, cardiac mr reporting it is very important that you have all the adequate clinical details and clearly understand the clinical question that is being asked to you. The imaging should be tailored for that specific clinical question and the specific clinical scenario and the report should provide sufficient details to the clinician so they can take appropriate decisions relating to patient's therapy. It is very, very important that your report answers the clinical question that was asked to you. The structure of report that I follow consists of these different sections. The standard section is those of patient details. There will be a small section where I will talk about the anatomy, which is followed by function and the flow measurements. We talk about the myocardial morphology, then we include some disease-specific parameters. Finally, there is a conclusion and a summary, which is followed by a specific clinical advice, if appropriate. So when we talk about anatomy, every report should have a mention about extra cardiac anatomy, which may have influence on this report. So for example, if you are dealing with a granulomatous cardiomyopathy, it is necessary to comment that there is no mediastinal or hilar lymphadenopathy. Or if you are dealing with a constrictive versus restrictive physiology, it is useful to comment that the pericardium is normal. In congenital heart disease, it is useful to talk about upper abdomen, looking for the visceral situs, looking at the iota and also looking for any paravertebral mass lesions in every patient who has cardiac MR examination. 
This is then followed by cardiac anatomy, which specifically talks about the atrial and ventricular appearances and if there are any mass lesions. In this session, I am not talking about congenital heart disease. I am specifically talking about adult cardiac MR examinations. It is very important to be familiar with the 17 segment model and reporting should be based on this 17 segment model. So we are talking the same language as the end user and there is no ambiguity. I tend to avoid naming the segments based on the numbers. I would rather say mid anterolateral segment rather than saying segment number 12. It is easier to remember things in that manner. The second section of the report is about functional assessment and flow. So LV or RV wall motion abnormality has to be commented upon whether it is normal, hypokinetic, akinetic or dyskinetic. I have seen many reports which comment about wall motion abnormality in every segment even if it is normal. I tend to only comment abnormal segments and I tend to bunch them together. So I would say hypokinesis in mid and apical anterior, mid and proceptal and apical septal segments rather than saying mid anterior hypokinetic, mid anteroceptal hypokinetic, apical anterior segment hypokinetic. This kind of makes my report more concise and easier to interpret. Volumetric assessment of ventricles is very very important and should be done in every cardiac MR case. End diastolic volume and end systolic volumes both the actual volumes and the indexed volumes should be provided along with the ejection fraction. Atrial size and the valvular status whether there is significant regurgitation or not needs to comment it on. Aortic flow and the pulmonary artery flow is calculated in every case in our institute and we compare that with ventricular stroke volumes to make sure that there is good quality control and correspondence between the ventricular outputs. Morphology includes myocardial thickness. If there is any hypertrophy, we talk about how bad is the hypertrophy, how much is the thickness, whether there is involvement of just one segment or whether it is circumferential hypertrophy as part of a systemic process. Mapping values are commented in our reports whether they are normal or abnormal. We also talk about edema whether focal area or diffuse areas of myocardial edema is present. Delayed enhancement should also be commented based on whether it is present or absence, whether it's an ischemic pattern or non ischemic pattern and what is the percentage of fibrosis when available. So far, we have discussed the generic model for cardiac MR reporting. Apart from this, some disease specific parameters also have to be commented upon. So for example, if you have a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it is important to talk about the severity of LV hypertrophy, which all segments are involved, if there is left ventricular outflow tract obstruction or not, if there is systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve leaflet, whether there is cavity obliteration or not, are all important parameters which need to be mentioned. In patients with ARVD or suspected ARVD, it is important to comment upon the RV volumes, especially the indexed volumes and right ventricular ejection fraction along with specific wall motion abnormalities. In patients who have been referred for viability assessment, it is important to comment about segmental viability in all the 17 segments for these patients. Patients who undergo cardiac MRI for ischemia assessment, 
it is important to comment on the perfusion parameters. By that I mean the heart rate and blood pressure response to adenosine stress perfusion and whether there is percents of perfusion defect or not. In cardiomyopathy patients, mapping values are very important which needs to be incorporated in the report and myocardial nulling sequences have to be seen especially in amyloid cardiomyopathy. In the conclusion segment of the report, it is important that we mention whether the left ventricle or the right ventricle is dilated or normal and what is their function. If there was any significant valvular finding, this also is mentioned in the conclusion. Presence of ischemia or presence of viability in a segmental manner is quantified. If there is a specific cardiomyopathy, we mention that and quantify the fibrosis. If there is any specific prognostic information that we have found, we would mention that also in our conclusion. Finally, we would put in any recommendation or follow-up advice in these patients. Let us look at some of our sample reports. So, this is a patient with dilated cardiomyopathy and severe LV dysfunction with prior infarction and the reason this patient was referred to us was for viability assessment. The section on anatomy comes in across here. If there is left pleural effusion, we have said about extra cardiac anatomy. We talk about atrial dimensions and the valvular status. We do talk about the right ventricular dimensions and we talk about the wall motion abnormality. In the left side, we talk about the left ventricular volumes, the left ventricular function, and this is where we talk about the morphology, saying that there is thinning and akinesis of different segments of the myocardium and whether there is LV hypertrophy or not. This is then followed by delayed enhancement where we specifically say transmural infarction of basal inferior, infraceptal, mid and apical anterior, inferior and whole septum and the apex. We also talk about whether there is any LV thrombus or not and in this patient there was extensive microvascular obstruction. We do make a comment of this. Second part of the report has got the volumetry of the left ventricle and the body surface area indexed volumes are given in the second page of the report. The conclusion basically talks about dilated LV with systolic and diastolic dysfunction, LV ejection fraction of 15%. We talk about RV, we talk about atria, and then we talk about the infarction and any poor prognostic feature. Finally, we say of the 17 segments, 11 are non viable. So, this is our standard viability report. This is a patient referred to us for stress myocardial perfusion. And what we can see, apart from our standard method where we talk about the lungs and mediastinum, the anatomy, we talk about the atria and the right ventricle. The left ventricle in a similar fashion where we have spoken about the volumes of the left ventricle, the function of the left ventricle and the wall motion abnormalities. In this we do add a section on the stress perfusion parameters, the dose at which we have given adenosine. There was no significant change in BP of this patient while the heart rate increased from 91 to 99 beats per minute. And then we talk about whether there is stress-induced perfusion defect or not, then we talk about delayed enhancement. In conclusion, same thing, ventricular dimensions, ventricular function, the atrial dimensions and valvular regurgitation, the details on infarction, and if there is any stress-induced perfusion defect. And finally, we would conclude saying of these 17 segments, Four are non-viable in the LAD territory while there is no stress-induced ischemia. This is a different uh, 
reporting template we have for patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Here we specifically talk about asymmetric LV hypertrophy predominantly involving the apex with maximum thickness of 20 millimeters. We say whether anterior mitral valve leaflet abnormal motion is present or not with narrowing of the LVOT and flow acceleration and if there is any obliteration of the cavity. We talk about T1 mapping parameters and we also talk about delayed enhancement if it is present or not. We do put a table about prognostic parameters whereby more than 30 millimeters of thickness is a poor prognostic feature or a delayed enhancement of more than 15% is also a poor prognostic feature. Conclusion would read appearances are those of apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with mild LVOT obstruction. This is our dilated cardiomyopathy template whereby this is univentricular dilatation with LV ejection fraction of just 33%. We will put our native T1 values and ECV values when available. We will talk about the atrial dimensions and we'll talk about the delayed enhancement appearances also. So, in this patient, we have concluded as appearances are of dilated cardiomyopathy with no specific cause demonstrated, meaning that there is no infarction, there is no infiltration that we could demonstrate clearly. So, this is DCM with no apparent cause at this stage. To conclude, my message for any cardiac MR report is to keep it simple. The longer the report becomes and more details that we provide, it becomes very difficult for the clinician to go through the report and understand it clearly. Report structure has to be built in collaboration with the end user separate template for separate pathology is useful so clinician understands where to look for specific information and in the end no paper can replace a phone call whereby you may be able to communicate verbally in a much better manner and have a good clinical consultation if you find something which is unusual or tricky thank you very much for listening please do feel free to reach out to us for any comments or questions. Thank you.